special event Burger. alert. I don't know how this will work. It'll be good. Get on your feet and run! This is Late for Changeover, your weekly space news and variety show. I'm your host, Marty Smith, and today I am alone in the closet with Jake Wall. <laughs> yeah, good to see you, Marty. We're here to bring you the latest headlines and updates pertinent to all Guardians and all the left services as well. So take your seats, get informed, and have a laugh as we present Late for Changeover. See, that's tricky because I got to do all the volume and stuff. And I know the video is going to look stupid because I'm constantly nah, looking good. up here to the left. Uh, but we're getting closer to a live show because that was not post-production music. Because. So, uh, Mr. History is out terrorizing Europe as we speak. Uh, yeah, that saves us about 45 minutes. So, <laughs> hopefully you have time to cover for that. <laughs> that might be a succinct show. Yep. Uh, and uh, Teapot is suffering another lower lower body injury, as the NFL would say. Yeah. Marty, I had no idea um, <laughs> hip dysplasia is for humans. I thought it was only golden retrievers <laughs> and German shepherds. But well, he the is amount of hip that damage age. on that boy. I'm not sure what he is in dog years, years, but that's probably yeah. about right, right? That's yeah. probably about right. Uh, yeah. What do bulldogs have? They have that fucking nose thing. Is that next? Oh for, yeah, the is that next for a teapot, right? Well, I mean, you never know. Because he got last time when we had him on the guest, uh, right at the beginning of the year, I think uh, he just got neutered, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. he couldn't last the he show. Just he had, had to go because yeah, he just he had the like, operation. All right, I'm out of here. So he got yeah. neutered, and he's got the hip peas, dysplasia. The peas, uh, <laughs> so defrosted. Yeah. Prayers go out to Teapot. So, yeah. uh, uh, how you doing? It's good Jake? working with him. It's just you and me, man. <laughs> just you and me. So it'll be doing a, good, man. It'll be a good show. It'll be a good show. Yeah. We can talk. Uh, we can talk product a lot. placement. We can talk more technical stuff than uh, <laughs> if the rabble's not here. Yeah. So, can I get that? Is the link to buy that cup in the comments? Well, uh, or, along the with uh, the good conduct medal, whoever. Whoever does the good good podcast metal, oh yeah, will get the mug. He's like a punch card, get yeah. like five. Kinda. Oh, I'll keep score on that. So yeah, I guess you I get had... one in your column today, Jake. Oh, there you go in your face, Eric and Teapot. Because you showed up for work, I... and you weren't late I for had... changeover. I was not, but <laughs> I had a troop that I had dead convinced that if he got. 10 stars from like general coins if he added up to 10 stars you would get that step promotion <laughs> that is so good because because he, he he held the door for some general that was coming in and i don't know i don't remember it, i wonder how, showed, how long do you think showed that me that guy, two star how long do you think that guy held on to that belief Oh, it was a couple of weeks, and then I freaking got tired oh, of hearing about damn. it. damn. I wish it would have been I was like, like you PCS and, and somebody. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what are you, a no. retarded? You don't get yeah. fucking coins for that. You don't get nothing for that. It was like a punch that. card. <laughs> Sergeant Wall, that son of a bitch. I mean, this wasn't, you know, there was an airman that we both knew. And when he turned 21, we took him to the strip bar. And then he then he was obsessive. He couldn't stop going to the yeah. show bar. Like all his yeah. money went there. And he would show up for day shift tired. But he had a number. And I was like, that's not a real number, dude. I wonder if that's the same naive naivete, as you will, for the guy yeah. that you told to get ten general coins. Yep. That's so creative. Yeah. That's so I remember that. That, that kid is very creative. I like that. I like it. That kid had a lot of, he had some issues before I even got a hold of him, right? <laughs> was he was he in your charge, of course? Yeah. Um, yeah. We all know you. So, no, yeah, those first five, man. <laughs> Who's that? 
<laughs> hey, we gotta we gotta do something for our retention. Okay, just don't put them under Jake, and they'll just stay. Don't in. put them under Jake. <laughs> to to be fair, like the first one already had serious financial issues. I know they gave you all the right? shit bags. The second one was, I mean, when I got him, he was renting an apartment and couch surfing with his friends because his girlfriend or wife had kicked him out and was living with someone else yeah, yeah, yeah. in the apartment he was paying for. I mean, that was... That's, a, that's the guy who was excited about the stripper numbers. So That's exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys laid that foundation bef right before where I got there. When did you tell yeah. that story? How long ago was it that you told that story? Was that out on outtakes? Um, Which one is that? The one about the, uh, the cell phone. Had on to the go to the school? first sergeant and had torn the ass out of his flight. Oh, suit. that one. That was that was my other one. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Okay, we won't we won't go we won't go down there because, like I said, yeah, that one. Everybody on Facebook drops off after two minutes. Maybe we should tell that yeah. story. We he, he freaking blew the ass right <laughs> like we were meeting the commander that day all kinds of other issues we're supposed to be in blues i'm like okay look sharp he shows up like two minutes till in his flight suit that looked like normal and then he's holding his freaking leather jacket which i don't understand why we always got leather jackets but he's nice. holding his jacket behind him <laughs> And I'm like, this is how you report in. I don't make me look like a total ass hat. Let me get your jacket. I grab his jacket, put it on the couch behind him. He's about to knock. And I stop his hand <laughs> because he had gotten so fat that he bent over and blew the ass out of that flight suit. And his solution for this was office staples. Just to get that. that stapler. Clack, 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 clack. He stapled up it. In there. On the outside, right? Oh yeah, you he folded it. it on the. Yeah, he folded he it smart together enough on to the fold outside. Fold it, turn it inside out, and stay. No, it don't down. turn. That's... Don't do that. Like he's like this, and just clunk, clunk, like. Whoa. So he he pretty much given up at that point, right? He was like, "I'm oh, going. Man. They're kicking me out. Why not well, staple it on the outside?" <laughs> I don't know, man. But that. So that your two, argument, your your leadership. Excelled the uh, first five. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, the first five. Eugene Gerald got out on his own, right? <laughs> Remember? <laughs> you went to. How you he, that, dude, man? he's awesome though. He, he gives me a call every once in a while. Does he really? Yeah, he got out. Got his like nursing degree with Michigan. Wow. Can, yeah, dude. Well, you know, and and he's actually, awesome. I salute those kind of guys. The guys who come in and they have such a hard fucking time. Yeah. Right. Man. Um, but when they go out and then they become successful and I'm like, Hey, yeah, it, it would be like, uh, when I tried propane, okay. Propane was not for me. I sucked at it. So I moved over to something else. Yeah. Military is not for everybody, but you tried it, you know, you rolled a dice, you did, yeah. you did all your shit and that's not an easy try. I mean, it's not like, Hey, I'll go try delivering pizzas for a while. It's like no, yeah. you got to commit yeah. for four years. So, uh, even though there were maybe shitheads in the military, a lot of those guys I finally got out, and I'm always surprised. Yeah. I was like, "Holy shit, man, you're doing well now. Well done, you're loving it. You know, you're doing it's great." Just not yeah. for them. So that's yeah. all right. I don't mind that. I think I think Eugene. I mean, after I PCS, he, I don't know, he got hosed a couple of times. <laughs> So, how oh, did he really? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, he I was don't... awesome. I got no problem with him. Like he, where's he at? He now? was well. Uh, I think he was West Coast, and oh, he. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he's doing great though. Him and his wife still married, have a kid, That's... and it all that shit. Right? We always say, "Oh, tech school, don't do it, man. Tech school, love, don't do yeah. it, don't do it." Right. 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 Nope. That's still married. That's still rare. having a blast. You know? Yeah. And I yeah. think it it almost feels like that's more successful nowadays than it ever was in our days. Because I was guaranteed divorce. Right? But 
Your yeah. Your first term marriage was always a guaranteed divorce. So, so there's I, a significant number. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but I think nowadays that they're making it work more and more. Oh yeah. Know. Maybe that's online. Maybe that's oh. maybe that's what you get when you meet your wife playing online games or something. Maybe that's more experience than randomly meeting one in the bar. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> so I don't know. I think it's uh, awesome though. Yeah, I but agree. But you're right though. It it used to be that man, you weren't getting E seven before one divorce. Oh right? yeah, absolutely. Right. And it, it used to be kind of a kind of a trope, kind of a punchline, you know? Yeah. Um and that's why you you, know, you talk to Mary Jess. I uh, who had that line? Fuck. I can't remember what comedian who had that line. He was like, hey, I'm I'm half uh, Irish and I'm half Korean because my dad was in the military. (laughs) I was like, yeah, yeah, I get it. It was a good it was a good line. I think I just butchered it. But yeah, I mean, you divorce a Korean. Oh, shit. That's you divorce a family when you do that. So. But that's rare. Like if you see. True. Yeah. A senior NCO that's still married. I mean, I hate to be Asian. stereotypical. But Asian or German. Yeah. That Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not uh, Carolina again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I met her over at Benning or I met her over at, uh, you know, uh, Edwards. And we're yeah. divorced. And they're like, ah, of course you are. Because they're trying to get the fuck out of there. Right? Anyway, uh, you ready for the news? <laughs> yeah, I'm excited All right. about it. I want your opinion on this. So from our first story from Task and Purpose. And it's been on it's been out there. It was on uh uh WTF Space Force Moments. They posted this. Uh America officially has its first Space Ranger. Now, what does that mean? First of all, the naming. All right, it's so buzz light year. I know. I know it is. But let's see. All right, can you see the guy? Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, let me find my mouse again. Okay. So, uh, the guy we're talking about, he's all, all the way over to the right. He's the one with no rank. Okay. Captain there Daniel Captain Daniel Reynolds. He graduated from the U.S. Military's Ranger School this week, last week, uh, becoming the first Space Force Guardian to earn a ranger tap. He is effectively the military's first space ranger. Okay, now that's task and purpose. Taking a little liberty with that, trying to make it sound dumb. But anybody who can make it through and put on that ranger tab, you're badass, man. That's fucking good on you. I think that, that's that's kick ass. That school yeah. is no joke. Um first off you gotta love to run. That was never me. I was like fucking I ain't running. And then you gotta love to run with a ruck, and then you gotta love to not sleep and be functional. So, good job. But why did this guy go? Well, Reynolds is the first of likely many more guardians to earn the tab in the service's future. He currently serves as a test director with the fourth test and evaluation squadron, Space Delta Twelve. I don't know where Space Delta Twelve is, right? But then again, yeah. I don't know where most of them. I think, you know, Delta Fours are up in Buckley, and I don't know what's down in Pete. But that whole Space Delta is, is tough to get used to. In Space Force's short history, Captain Reynolds has emerged as a leader in the service's achievements. In May 2021, he became the first Guardian to graduate from the U.S. Army Air Assault School. What the hell is he doing over there? In April... 2022, he became the first guardian to graduate from the 28-day-long Sapper Leaders Course, becoming the first Sapper in the Space Force. What do you have to say about that? What do you have to say about that? But once again, if he's passing the test, he's doing good. I I don't understand. Right. I agree. I agree. I don't understand it, but Maybe it gives us credibility in those communities. I mean, 
I don't know. Much Obviously, like the whiskey program, right? Like, what? Well, sure, if, sure. Okay, he's not going to go back to test an eval, probably, right? It's, it's going to be like if he was a whiskey, he'd well, if if he graduate does, that school and then he goes, you're right. vectored off of something else, you know. He's he's going to get back to his desk and they're like, hey, uh, you're overdue on opsec training and CUI training. Could you take a few days and knock all these certificates out? And he's like. Where's my next school? <laughs> yeah. I got to get out of here, right? I'm done with this. Uh, okay, so how'd he get there? To earn his ranger tab, Reynolds took part in a ranger assessment course with 30 other service members. The course included 15 soldiers and 15 airmen, while he was a sole representative of the military's newest branch. For more than 60 days, he and the others were put through the grueling tranger process, training process. So I think that's... I think that's what they used to call RIP, Ranger Indoctrination Program. Uh, so it was like a pre-course to see if you could actually make it through the real course. Uh, during the course, he told the Air Force that the training helped him get a real sense of what troops deal with in the field and how they utilize tools such as satellite information. I like that, right? We've We've had a discussion before where space has that blind spot about people that are actually out doing the fighting. True. Right? right. They don't right. miss a warning. Okay, I pick up the phone, I call. They don't actually pay attention most of the time to the end product and the end user. Right. You know? Which is which was always odd to me that it fell to us to go educate others about what space-based missile warning could do for you. Yeah. And, you know, you go to the, uh, oh, God, what was uh, the, where'd they always deploy to? What was that called? The, uh, ah, fuck, name escapes me. But wherever they had to go serve, like where Denman went and all those other guys went, and they had to go and give that, space brief or space intel brief or whatever it was back yep. then yeah and they had to educate the maneuver commanders that okay we have these capabilities for you and they'd be like ah shut up space guy <laughs> it's like wait a minute yeah but i i don't know why we had to go and be our own salesman well you know, we have weird. to be our it's own weird. salesman because we're so I don't know whether we're overclassified or not, but we're really good at keeping our capabilities from ourselves. And we're well, that's really true. bad about getting into good exercises where, and providing the actual services during those exercises yeah. to yeah. show those people, sure. you know? Sure. But, um, well, anyway, he's getting uh, some of that experience. So yeah. Nice. Uh, Captain Reynolds joined the Air Force Academy in 2013. He graduated in 2017. He initially trained. Now, this is a little dig on Captain Reynolds. He initially trained as a test pilot, but switched to becoming an aerospace engineer with the formation of Space Force. All right. Jake, I want to train you as a test pilot. Pretty fucking hua, right? Let me make a movie yeah. about you. Yeah, that that's like. What would make you go. crazy. You don't know, no, I'd rather go be an engineer. And uh, I don't want to fly anymore. I don't want to fly anymore. Right? Does that yeah. sound like a logic? Or was it forced on him and go, Yeah. He, okay, you washed out of flight school. <laughs> or, or, you know, he saw the writing on the wall, whether, where <laughs> it could have been. Yeah. Only the top five get these specific. And things. I'm currently ranked at 25. And I'm, so and maybe I'm I should. Uh... Still on there, still flying, still doing <laughs> right. good, but I'm right. not up there. I might be flying heavies at the end of this. That's training, true. That, you know? that could be. That could be. He's like, man. I mean, I could get but, out with a getting's good. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. good on him, though. Like, he's made the most of yeah. that change. And now. Right. There was no way as a test pilot that he would have been able to no. afford this opportunity to go no. to ranger school and do all that, you know? So that's cool. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a point. I never even thought about that. Um, so he transferred over to space in February 2021. He earned a Master's of Science at MIT in 2019. So mm. fucking, he's a smart dude. 
smart shit, and yeah. physically gifted. So yeah, Eric could take him. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you have somebody body stain Eric, then he'll look. You know. Yeah. Oh, he'll glisten nice. <laughs> yeah. I good on Captain <laughs> Reynolds, man. I don't take away from Heck him. Heck yeah. But the but I've always wondered this too. Because I knew guys who went to Ranger School who were in the artillery. I knew guys who went to Ranger School who were in supply. You know? I knew a guy who went to Ranger School who was in the army band. So my oh, question really? is, uh, you know, it used to be eight weeks. I can't remember how long, how long Ranger School is now. But I, I get it that it's like this proving ground. I always thought Airborne was because Airborne is a three week class, you know, that that's not a big time commitment. And you don't have a pre rec commitment to go to Airborne School. Oh, okay. Rangers, six, eight weeks, whatever it is. Plus, there is two weeks, maybe a 60 or 30 days before that, that you got to do this course to see if you could actually make it through the ranger course so you're talking probably a three-month commitment yeah we were always short when we were working together right we were always short people uh yeah at sibbers <laughs> right yeah. we were and i yeah. even in the army when we had we had like six e6s in our pl in our platoon maybe five e6s i, I remember one of them was this fantastic softball player and he looked just like a softball player should look he made the all army team all he, he would hit <laughs> hey that's too much of an inside joke for everybody out there but <laughs> this guy could yeah. could hit a home run off of everything he was that good and it's, you tip your hat, and you're like, oh, great. You're all Army softball. All Army softball. Never, I saw him twice a year. But yep. he's on your books. Yeah. That's an E6 that you don't have the use of who's gone. He's out. He's out. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I look at this, uh, you know, if I was a, uh, and maybe it's different because if you're the, if you're the, uh, God, what are they called anymore? Squadrons? Are they still squadrons? Or are they deltas? Now? Yeah, squadron okay. unit. So if you're a squadron commander, and you have how many captains in a squadron? Ten, maybe? And now you're yeah, down Yeah, depends, one. depends, right? right? Yeah. And now you're down one because he's off doing ranger school, which is no benefit to the squadron. He's off doing sapper school, which is no benefit to the squadron. He's off doing air assault. Shorter course, but it's no benefit to the squadron. So I mean, you but, gotta be, you but gotta that's be a common thing, though, right? Like that's a common thing. There's, there's those like random liaison jobs, and then there's those. I mean, when you're going to whiskey school, all that stuff, I you guess. just take it out of hide, right? I, I mean, guess. even on Pete, when we were there, the active duty would have to do, um, base honor guard. Right, you'd be cut over to yeah. base honor guard for that three was, months. Yeah, that was dumb. And you're like, right, it's your turn. Right. Like, well, you know. Well, look at look at us pulling crew, right? When we were yeah. E fives, E sixes. Yeah, you had so few. If one went down, that probably meant an extra ship for somebody. Oh yeah. But do you yeah. think that E five they'd be like? Hey, I'd like to go try Ranger School. Like, shut up, get back in your seat. <laughs> I mean, I think I think that's a common. I think those opportunities are so they look so good on they that do. commander and that right. Oh, I got this kid through Whiskey School. Oh, I got this kid through Ranger School. That's got it. That's that looks benefit, good on the commander. Right? That's got to yeah. be the benefit but, because it's it's if you're if you're in a crew environment, you hate that guy. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, we ran into that issue where I mean, somebody I would to have to go off exercises. to yeah, somebody have to go off to school. Yeah. Or, and the, or the commander, the... you got to ship a guy to an exercise for two weeks. Or, or deployment. And you're like, yeah, is right. he going to be deployment. better? Yeah. Yep. Or deployment? Is he going to be better at his job? Good point. Well, Good point. No, no, it doesn't help really. The unit. Yeah, it doesn't do but anything. It helps Big Air Force, I suppose. I, and I think it helps 
the space community as a whole because those experiences get you out there just like uh reynolds said sure yeah you know, i had never I, I had no idea how much these guys used it or how much they how right. how they used it or you right. know but even in the army you'd have these guys all with the ranger tag yeah all over the place except for ranger battalion like, <laughs> good on you but why would the army allow that you know i, I that's yeah. i don't get that i don't get that uh okay give me one second my dog is out hold on let me open the door. oh here we go come on Hope you leave this in. <laughs> See the level of unprofessionalism. We could never go live. Well, be stuff well, like this. I know we can go live. We can go, <laughs> we can go live. Whatever. Why not? If what? if somebody else was here, and if we have three, then somebody can walk I've away. Seen, I've seen enough of the enough. other live podcasts, and I'm like, yeah. There's no way we're not wasting time like they do. So, all right, moving on. Back into your realm. Moving on, Jake. Moving, moving on. on. This is from spaceforce.com. Have you gone out to that website yet? Yeah. Com? It is. With the, the sound effects the are Halo fantastic. Halo music in the back. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, this is this is like cathedral music, man. A million dollars just for that <laughs> website. <laughs> and there's like four stories on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Reynolds well, is on there right now. Probably. Yes. Probably. I mean, he's going to Rightfully be... so. Like that's the biggest news in the space force, right? Oh, now, they but. are gonna. I mean, well, the regular guardians will yeah. be like, "Yeah, good for him. Good job, Captain." You know. Yeah. But the the higher ups will be like, "Look at our space ranger. Yeah. Look at him. <laughs> we can do rangers. just what you guys can do." Like, yeah. well, that guy can. <laughs> yeah. In general, no. And we'll get to. I don't a story know who this about- we is. We'll get to the story about uh, BMI and being overweight later. Yeah, so nice. he is definitely the exception to the rule. But anyway, from SpaceForce.com, you ever heard of black skies, Jake? I exercise have. My last black job was skies. exercise planning. That's a good name, too. It's a good one. Black Skies 23 3. Space Force conducts the largest ever joint space electromagnetic warfare exercise. Take it away, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> On September 22nd, uh, the U.S. Space Force successfully concluded Black Skies 23 3, the third iteration of Space Training and Readiness Command's exercise series focused on Tactical Space Electromagnetic Warfare, or SEW. Yep. Uh, the roster of participating units was extensive, including. The Combined Space Operations Center, the CSPOC, the 16th Electronic Warfare Squadron, uh, the 3rd Combat Training Squadron, the 25th Space Range Squadron, the 527th Space Aggressor Squadron, Air Force Reserve Command's 428th Electromagnetic Warfare Flight, Air National Guard's 138th EWS, 138th Space Control Squadron, and 114th EWS, and a series of intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance squadrons. Jesus, that's a lot. Yeah. Additionally, this iteration also included the 26th Weapons Squadron's Remotely Piloted Aircraft Electronic Combat Officer Course, or RECOC. R-E-C-O-C. RECOC. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Marty, you and I were both in the, well, basically in the 16th. Uh, right, that's, that's well, the I was going to ask you about that. I was going to ask, that is that is, what they, they just changed their name it. to? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And also the U.S. Army's first space brigade, multi-source intelligence ground system. Now, I thought the first space brigade was kaput, right? After we um, took well, JTAGs we, and all that stuff? I, thought I think we're to, slowly taking it away. I thought I they think were supposed the to space uh, stand down. Um, so that's a lot. Do you want to, can you talk unclassified about what it was like? I I never ran one. It was just, from what I know, it's focused on the C two, and and their ability to task multiple 
electronic warfare squadrons at the same time. Is that what it was? It was that kind of drill, and then them they they go and do their thing. Because one of the things they were, whoops, that's a little loud on the mic, isn't it? Sorry. Nice. Um, one of the elements that they were talking about on this was that they they went they did some simulated threats scenarios, but they also did live fire. So their live fire was actually using operational satellites and bouncing some signals off of those, which is. I know to those who are not space familiar is no big deal, but that's a big deal. Right. Well, bandwidth is limited, right? Bandwidth and you is don't limited. Want to show our capabilities and you know And also every satellite system up there, every owner is like, You wanna use our bird for what? And I'm like, it's just anonymous you know, it's just innocuous. It's just bouncing a signal yeah. like, hmm. Let me talk about this for six months before we give you authorization to do that. Right. Because but that's where, that's like the whole point of the range. Yeah. Right. Space is, range. Yeah. Is yeah. to yeah. hook all that stuff up, you know, do Absolutely. all that stuff. So this was, uh, this was uh, really marked by doing live fire stuff instead of simulated stuff. So they were really bouncing signals off of uh, real operational satellites and they got good results out of doing that. So that's great. Nice. Uh, in stepping towards using this in real time, real time warfare. Uh, the live fire engagements are crucial as they provide a realistic training environment. Yes, because you do it in a simulator, everything always works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. But you do it out there where you're actually aiming dishes, and you're like, can't get a signal, can't find him. I think I'm on a side lobe, you know. Yeah. And that's all. That's all exactly. good stuff, right? <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, in theory, you're like, I'm gonna peek and pull on this satellite, that's right. and then you do it, and you're like, it 45 right minutes there. later, you're like, what the? And three <laughs> crew fights, you know? <laughs> right. Test this. Right. Does this even work? Like, come on. And yeah. uh, God forbid you got a three delta out there who's a pain in the ass, and he's gonna tell you how how little you know as a space operator. But we but love our three step, deltas out there, so don't. But get never this. step in to help, though. No, they won't help until. But they'll or criticize teach. the shit out of you. Once oh you know. <laughs> man, why'd you I do mean, it this way? I don't know. You were we, standing five feet over here. Why didn't you tell me? Nothing? Why didn't you save me from this error? <laughs> we got to learn somehow. I'm like, okay, how do you do it? Well, well I, I wonder mean, if they're even three, three deltas, deltas anymore. I wonder if they're even. There. No, no, they probably they're probably not. Their, they probably changed I mean, their AFSC. So we all know our, our one. I mean, I'm not going to drop names, but it rhymes with Schmeschfall. <laughs> the Westfalian. The Westfalian. Uh, Off on his adventures, <laughs> riding around the world right now. So I love it. Here, Jake, I wanted to bring this up about this article. So if you read this article, you're like, this is a bunch of flowery talk. And here's, a, here's an example of this flowery talk. U.S. Space Force Lieutenant Colonel Scott Nakatani. 392nd Combat Training yeah. Squadron commander said, quote, all right, I got to take a big breath for this one. There's so, a lot of So, big first reasons. of all, I know Noggin, and he's fucking awesome. I oh, like yeah? That guy. Oh, yeah. nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Is that, is that, did I say Nakat his last name? Nakatani right? is, Nakatani? yeah, Nakatani. Like the tower almost. <clears throat> um, <laughs> <laughs> Christmas is coming up. Nakatomi Tower. Yeah. All right, here's this quote. The synergy and coordination exhibited among diverse military units across different branches accentuated the importance of synchronization in achieving mission objectives. This mm -hmm. harmonization is crucial for ensuring combat capability in contested, degraded, and operationally limited environment. End quote. That silver tongue fox. That, yeah, that's, oh, that's man, golden he's good. pen right there. That is golden oh. pen. And it says nothing, right? So, well, we did stuff together. That's what it says. <laughs> we got to practice doing stuff together. Okay. So for all of you <laughs> listening, and I've actually got to reply to some of these uh, comments on the uh, WTF Space Force Moments page. It's like, what do you guys do? Part of the problem is that statement. Most of what we do, I think – Almost everything except for lift, right, is either classified secret or higher. And yeah. 
depending yeah. on what lift is doing, depending on what the payload is, that's probably classified secret or higher. So you can't talk about most of what Space Force does. That's what the problem. To our detriment. To our right? detriment because Once we can't again, sell ourselves to everybody. We can't sell ourselves and we can't show anybody in no. exercises. Right. So, I mean, if I were on the receiving end, I'd be like, go away. You never bring anything to the fight. You never bring your toys to the game. You just say it's secret or sap or whatever. Go talk about you know? your harmonization and your synchronization somewhere else. And it's like, God, if I could only tell you the truth behind that news story you just saw on yeah. TV. If I could yeah. only tell you the truth about what North Korea is really testing. You know, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, because it's all classified. And that's also a par part of the problem with, I mean, back when we were uh, Space Command, right? That was also part of the problem why we were never competitive against other E5s, E6s, E7s, because half our stuff you had to write around the classified stuff. Yeah. You could never really say it. So uh, just those who are listening know that what Space Force is doing, especially when it comes to satellites, most of that stuff is classified, and they can't tell you how good they make the force of the United States uh, because it's but, it's all redacted. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think I think that's one big issue. And then you and I both have discussed the fact that Space Force has that and, you know, Air, Air Force space had that image problem of these are our toys and we're not going to share them with you. Yeah. Right. Right. And then not want to go out and, and play those games, you know? Right. And, and then the other one is we always think we're the war fighter. We've been told so many times wow. that we're the war fighter and we never embrace the fact that we could be kick ass as support. And I, right. That Absolutely. could be a big problem with the morale of space force in that we don't celebrate what we really are, which is, 90% of us are awesome at support. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, really, the Air Force and the Space Force in general, until Space Force gets some weapons, maybe. But still, yeah. they will. They are essentially a support force. That's yeah. okay. That's all right. I mean, that's and you bet. And we're good at it. And we're right? very good for at the it. most right. part. We're good at it. And I mean, A tens are support. Yeah, they support the ground around. force, and everybody's happy to see the A-10s when they're coming, right? Everybody's happy that all their GPS works. Yeah. Until it doesn't work, and then they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And they're like, call the Space Force. Oh, those guys who don't do anything. And they're like, wait a second. Maybe they do yeah. a little bit more than you think they do. So I wish we could talk about it. You know, we, we, I, I, it, it made me think that maybe every episode, we should do uh, like an orbital mechanic lesson. Oh. A quick like five minute lesson. Oh. You know, because there's a lot of people who don't like, I don't know what space, what's the big deal about space? You just put it up there and that, because all they see is in movies. Yeah. If they need a satellite to go over there, they can do that. And they're like, no, they cannot. They don't have that kind of fuel. Right. Well, the, yeah, the movies. Have oh, really maybe we should do a like a, time. like a space. Mythbusters. And go. Here's what you can't do with a satellite. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to know 14 hours ahead of time. <laughs> now you know. For those of you watching, did you see the ex trainer and evaluator? His whole heart fell when he was like, "Maybe we should talk about orbital mechanics." He went, "Oh." <laughs> That might be some bring back some scary dreams. Oh. I don't know. But you never taught. You never taught. Uh, shit. What was it used to? What did it used to be called? Um, I taught at the schoolhouse, though. Well, I know, but, but you never Sibbers taught. Sibbers only mission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was yeah. that? What was that initial course we all had to go to? What was it? it oh, went through yeah, many yeah. different name changes. Yeah, yeah. But it I was like even... the fundies course. Yeah, it was a fundamentals right. course. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I never taught that. No. But still, I tell you, when I went through that, that was fascinating. I thought it was really cool, right? 
Uh, at least when the guy wanted to instruct and not go, okay, I watched two more episodes from from the Earth to the Moon, and I'll be back in two hours. <laughs> hey, like you yeah. just put on a video? <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything to chain you on. So. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's transition over to the VA. This is actually, I think this is actually a good thing that the VA is doing. Oh, okay. So from military.com. I'll be the judge of that. Yeah, well, yes, you will. From yeah. military.com, the VA asks veterans to call 10 vet friends for National Buddy Check Week, which starts next week, right? The Department of Veterans Affairs is encouraging veterans to reach out to 10 of their veteran friends next week as part of the first National Buddy Check Week, an initiative aimed at improving former service members' mental health by having them connect or reconnect with one another. What do you think about that? I mean, <laughs> as a, I think it's a good idea. I, Teapot's answer. Conceptually, I think it's a good that's idea. a great thing, I, and I agree with. I think reaching out and talking to those people that you've all dealt with in the same BS is important. What I agree with that. Sure. Sure. I mean, cynical <laughs> perspective is the VA pawning the its perspective. Yeah, the VA is pawning its crap job on us. You know, clearly we have no solution for the mental health issues in this staggering number of suicides. So how about we just make these guys call each other? Have, have you, uh, this may be a little off topic, but have you ever called in the <laughs> VA prescription refill line? Oh, dude, <laughs> that alone. Look, is that the most I, frustrating automatic call here's, that you've ever Here's made? my thing. With that, if anybody has ever called that, I'm sorry to rehash this, but this, you get reconnected to three or four different yes. things, different lines, different voices, just to get to the end the end automated teller that says, enter your prescription number. <laughs> okay, you're good. Which that is awesome. I got to be honest being able to just dial up and order a prescription that's sure. cool sure if i could dial that number directly, directly and bypass and not have to go to this one <laughs> and hear if this is emergency you hang up and dial 911 if you want this blah blah blah, blah option five okay if you're having cool. a mental health issue yeah call this yeah. number yeah. if and this is a medical emergency to, that dial 911 and that like, guy is slow and steady right the first time I ever called it, I got so frustrated because I wanted to enter the number. So I finally got to it. Oh. He goes, enter your prescription number. And I already started dialing it, right? Yeah. Nothing happened because I didn't let him finish to go, enter your prescription number, followed by the pound sign. <laughs> like, God yes. damn it. I've done that. I've dialed it in. I'm like, what happened? What's happened. going on? Oh, pound. Oh, yeah, pound. <laughs> And and here's the thing though, you can't jump the gun. If you know no. for a fact right. it's right. option one, three, two, and four, you can't just do that. Like boom, you cannot. Right. enter your boom, uh, boom. No, <laughs> you gotta let it play out. And it, every single it's one checks on your mental health and if it's yeah. an emergency. Yeah, I'm right. like, right. Yeah. Uh... yeah, I'm glad that's annoying because. <laughs> Lately, I've been thinking that I'm just so incredibly old and cranky that this just is the next phase of life. No. Until I give up on stuff. And I'm like, is this really that annoying or am I just being cranky? Uh, I don't know. I I'm glad think, you get annoyed by right, it. Too. I do. I, I think when you stop getting annoyed, that's when you're just sweatpants every day. You just get up. <laughs> you just care. You don't care. Right? All day. All day. <laughs> Looking like an Eastern European mafia member. Just fucking velour tracksuit. Fuck it. You got that socks and the uh, Adidas slip, slips. Yeah. Right? The slips on. And I got and I got coffee on Wednesday with four of the boys at the donut <laughs> shop. Right? You go into any local donut shop and there's like four or five cranky old guys just sure. sitting there drinking yeah. coffee That's and true. BSing. 
That's true. Yeah. I can't wait till I'm that, you know. That'd be awesome. I, I, I look forward to it. In fact, I wish I wish Parker had I mean, I'm with the American Legion, but there's no building here. You know, I have to oh, go yeah. I have to go forty five yeah. minutes away to join the place where the building. I wish we had a building so I could sit in one of those VFWs or yeah. American Legion. Yeah. Yeah. And just just spew hatred. <laughs> <laughs> For no reason. For no reason. <laughs> All right. No. Deputy VA Secretary Tanya Bradshaw said in a statement Friday, quote, through National Buddy Check Week, we're encouraging all veterans to reach out to their buddies, even if they haven't talked for a while. And if a veteran needs help, please refer them to the VA. Don't let a buddy miss out on the resources they've earned. Now, to counter what you were talking about, Yes, it would be nice to see the VA do this themselves. But at the same time, uh, I like them for for bringing it up because I started thinking about it. I was like, do I have 10? I I know I have 10 (laughs) veteran friends, but have I actually called them? You know, and and, uh, you roll the clock forward. You know, I'm 56. You roll the clock forward 10, 20 years, and I've seen – the patients that my my wife's a home health care nurse, and I've seen the patients that uh, several veterans that she has seen, and they're like, ah, you know, my fa- I haven't heard from my family, or you know, it's like, yeah. I yeah. I see your wife, and that's kind of my contact. So if you knew them, it would be probably a good thing to go. Oh yeah, yeah maybe that's a, that's a good bringer of the yeah. memory. Maybe I should give this guy a call, you know, because you don't know, you don't know. And sometimes that's all it takes is a call. You know, I'm not talking uh, what was <laughs> what, what was the Adam Sandler movie where he called Steve Buscemi and he, he yeah. crossed him off the list. Billy Madison. Yeah, like... Billy Madison. I'm not talking it's a call like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad I called that guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> but... I, I, <laughs> It would be back. It, you don't know. it is valid, though, yeah, honestly. You don't I mean, just reach out. Right, right, right. I think that's a cool thing. So, buddy, check. Even if we just BS and just leave a yeah. message, BS yeah. for, or BS for a while, that's cool. I know you're probably fine, but just call and see how you're doing. You know, we, yeah. We served together 10 years ago, but it'd be kind of nice. So, yeah. And who knows? Maybe, I, maybe you rekindle a friendship there. You never know. I, I met up with uh, Westfall to ask him some advice on that iron butt challenge that I did a couple oh, yeah. weekends ago. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he's done multiple ones. So I met he's, him. Yeah. He rides everywhere. Yeah. He rides like crazy. So I, I texted him and I was like, Hey man, what's going on? Hey, can I pick your brain, borrow this spot tracker? He's like, yeah, where do you want to go? And I'm like, let's go to breakfast. He goes, what? A, and the first response is in bed. You know, of course, <laughs> right? That's a standard response That's from a Scott's response. Some yes. other military members, yes. like, yeah, come on, man. Um, and then it turned out where wherever old men go to lie to each other. That's what I responded. And he's like, "Oh, we're going to Sandy's then." You're like, "Oh, okay, Sandy's. yeah, Sandy's, of course." Yep, that's a good one. So, I mean, it was good to catch up, and he well, was out true. riding, and, and, and some, and sometimes, and. You know, not to not to turn this for the dark, but we we both know, and I, I'm assuming we both have been in touch with people who, hey man, they didn't do that great, right? You know, maybe they took the yeah. flyers, maybe they did something like, fuck, why didn't I call that guy? You know, yeah. I don't know. But ten, that's pretty good because I started running through and I was like, okay, what ten guys wouldn't get pissed that they hadn't heard from me in ten years? <laughs> Well, there's a difference between guys too. Like, well, if you've yeah. got a good friend and you call them up, you after yeah, a couple that's minutes, easy part. right, right, you're back into it. You know, yeah, sure, sure. But if you call the guy, it's like, hey, I, yeah, I think we were friends when we worked together, but I haven't talked to him now. Yeah. Then it gets a little like, hmm, you know. Uh, I'd have to look for an old recall roster. <laughs> Oh, uh, I did. I did. Uh, I did text uh, Dela Garza. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And I was like, "Hey, man, just 
just reaching out. Jake gave me your number, and he goes, hey, how you doing? I was like, good. How about you? He's like, I'm doing good. And I said, hey, would you ever like to come on? <laughs> never heard from him again. He never texted me yeah. back. No, I'm not I doing like, that. Oh, I guess not. Yeah, I Are saw you, him maybe at I a barbecue. Him for like, check week. Yeah, yeah. I saw him. It was like a freaking family reunion where we went to a barbecue at Rutherford's house. Like it was a housewarming. Yeah. And Henry walks in and I'm like, whoa, man, what have you been up to? How are you doing? He's like, oh, yeah. So end up Trent Hines walked in. Oh, like wow. it was yeah. just, it was just like Sibbers alumni. Era. Yeah. 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 I was like, holy crap, man. <laughs> Look at this. So it was fun. That's cool. Buddy check week will officially start Monday and run through October 20th. Wait a minute. What's the day? We're late on that. Sorry, guys. So if you wanted to do buddy Monday, check week, you start, still have two okay. days by the time we post this. All right. It started Monday and it ends on Friday. But don't let the VA dictate that it ends on the 20th. Ooh. Just keep doing it till you get to 10. To, you know, just like uh, Amway wants you to. So just keep <laughs> talking to people. Right. Or Sensi or what, Mary Kay or whatever. The, the VA is also encouraging veterans, family members, caregivers, and survivors to participate in the program. So if you go out to the VA's website, there is a crisis line. There is uh, nice. all types of links to this, uh, this uh, program. Um, a little bit behind the scenes, National Buddy Check Week was – uh started by the american legion in 2019 which volunteers from the organization call veterans for wellness checks and to see how they can help the legion says it has reached at least one million people through its buddy check program so that's kind of that's cool. pretty cool honestly yeah. all joking aside i think that's a cool program yeah that's it's simple yeah. but it does make you think and you're like huh are there 10 guys that i could call and and, and you know there's you get past your first three or four guys and then you're kind of second tier or whatever, whatever you want to yeah. classify them as. You're like, should I give them a call? And, yeah. with and then you get to like, like third tier, like De La Garza and, you know, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, don't call Bro. Westfall cause you know, he's not okay. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just like a baseline though. Oh, yeah. like, oh, that's my third yeah. call, and I spent 45 minutes on it. I was like, oh, fuck. Scott, I got to go. Right. Yeah. I'm going to report you to the VA. Maybe like, you need to you call, your boy, tell... <laughs> <laughs> call your boy, tell. Call your boy Scott's, what was his um, partner in crime? The maintainer in crime. Oh, well. Oh. <laughs> oh shit, I'm just pretending to not remember the name. You want me to out him? Tell side? Tell John. Tell John. That's yeah. it. That's it. Yeah. But I mean, that would be a miracle if we if we put this uh, podcast out and the first comment is Tell John's like, don't use my name. I'd be like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. I <laughs> he haven't listens. heard from him. Yeah, I haven't heard from him. And... I guess he's doing okay. Does that count as a buddy yeah. check? Totally counts. <laughs> That's two. You, Marty, are one? That's Tell two. John telling us to F off? Well, Scott's, a, Scott's about three. He'll, he'll take you. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Scott. Yeah. All right, Jake. I want you to get your bullshit flag ready on this one. All right. <laughs> so this is from taskandpurpose.com. The Marine Commandant wants all Marines to do a tour in the Indo-Pacific. And as we talked before yeah. the show, that's probably smart. Now, yeah. Yeah. But, but you know, at first blush, you're like, well, why wouldn't they all want to go there? The same reason that all the Army guys want a homestead somewhere or all the space guys or Air Force guys want a homestead somewhere. So, uh, and I, I, I'm i always amazed at the guys who get to pull that off. Oh, I knew a guy, I knew a guy in the Army. That is he impressive. Did, he went from, God, where was it? I think it was Fort Hood. He would do a three-year tour. He'd go to, like, Korea for a year, get his choice, base choice, come back to Fort Hood. Base of preference, yeah. And then he'd, he'd just keep doing those one-year tours just to make sure he'd come back. And he had yep. 
multiple houses and he had renters and all this. I get that. Um, space Space Force, well, Space, jeez, uh, I can't even remember what it was. Ash Space or whatever it was before. I mean, uh, that's that's fairly easy. Yeah, I it's mean, what we got? What you want? I, it's hard to avoid Shriver. <laughs> that's the thing. If you wanted Shriver or Vandy, right, you're good. Right, right. Now people are like, "Hey, send me to uh, um, shit." What's the one in Florida that only had like two no, one Eglin. sixes there? Right, yeah, right. No, there's Eglin or there's like. Well, the range to Cape well, Kennedy. The range, yeah, yeah. But they didn't have that many one Charlie sixes. So whenever no, you ran not a lot across of one Charlies, yeah. that unicorn, it was like, "How the hell did you get there?" And you're like, "Oh yeah, you're a female and you're really good looking. I get it." No, <laughs> or I'm gonna cuss this man, that oh. son of a bitch, Bobby Crowley. <laughs> he had the best damn space freaking career ever. Did he really? I didn't oh know that. man! I think I knew yeah. he'd been out to. Uh, Ag- it was Buckley to Cod, or and then somewhere else, and then Hawaii. Cod. How the hell did he go to? Cod? He was at Cod, and he was at Hawaii. He was at. I'm like, oh. how the hell? The best space freaking. That's that awesome. guy. That's really. That, cool. Oh, I know. Everybody, they need to go, put his career up as like. An incentive poster. Well, but it's also a unicorn because you're like, you'll never oh. do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a rarity if you get space but guys they could make going a, to Hawaii and they then could make back, a kick ass commercial for that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, this Marine Commandant wants all the Marines to do a tour in the Pacific. In a recent message to the Force, Marine Corps Commandant General Eric Smith urged all Marines to spend at least part of their careers in the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command Theater of Operations, which includes Japan, Guam, Philippines, and Australia. He said, If you haven't done a tour in the Indo-PACOM, your career, your professional development is not yet complete. You need to go. It's a great place to be. So, But then, Marine Major Joshua Larson, Smith's spokesman, came out and said, uh, where Marines are stationed does not affect their promotion status. He's very adamant about like, that. Yeah. It does not prevent you from getting promoted. The process for promoting Marines looks at skills and other factors, but not duty stations. Have you found that to be the case with your uh, career? Now, that's a little different once you transfer into space. Because yeah. there's only limited places yeah. you can go. But yeah. Yeah, I found it. It was like, well, you need to go. You should go out to California. You should go, you know, go down to P. Well, Berkeley, all it was always stuff. like the needs of the Air Force, right? That was the saying. It was. And they're but, trying to get away from that. They're trying to get the best qualified. But but when you had the Chiefs come out know. and talk and go, hey, here's here's what we just found on this last promotion board. Yeah. Here were the guys who advanced. They had variety of assignments they moved around you know they went out to uh especially with the reserves they went out to georgia you know that kind of thing you're like fuck who wants to go to georgia nobody wants to go to but georgia. but then the thing is like we both saw that multiple times where it changed right it's whoever it unfortunately there's no real probably research behind what makes the best space professional is it there is. Five years in a place and then move on. Is it? It's always the whims of, oh, I did this in my career, so that's what everybody else needs to do, right? Whoever that chief in the reserve that board up, right, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes it was, oh, you need a ton of volunteer stuff, and other times you need a ton of education. Sure. Or then, then it goes to mission, and then it goes right. to broadening of horizons, and then right. uh, all of a sudden it's like, oh, we're losing continuity we need everybody to homestead right you know i mean yeah we went through that uh you know if you can get a deployment that'd be great yeah and you're like oh shit yep. now everybody's going i gotta get a deployment i gotta get a deployment so you're right it, it goes to the whims of who's there so 
that's uh that's why I brought this article up because uh I, just, I think it's a know, good idea is, though. I, yeah, the commandant's saying you should go out to the Pacific. And I don't know why he said that. Uh because assignment should you know push people. Uh you get your choice only if timing is right and yeah. the needs of the Marines, the Air Force, the Space Force uh are there. But if they're not there, you're like, no, nope, everything in California is full. You got to go out to the Pacific. You got to go out yeah. to Okinawa. Get drunk on a balcony. You know? <laughs> God. That's probably why, though, the Marines don't want to go to the Pacific. It might be. Yeah, it might be. Right? Like, Okinawa is constantly on lockdown. <laughs> it's constant. But, you know, Always. And, you know. Through the Army, through the Air Force, and, and and through different career fields that you've met, you have met those guys who will swear by Germany or who will oh, swear yeah. by Korea. Yeah. You know, they're just like, nope, I, this is my place. I, I'm doing everything I can to get back here, right? Yep. Uh, Catherine Kuzminski, Director of the Military Veterans and Society Program at the Center for a New American Security Think Tank in Washington, Jesus, what a title. Yeah. Said uh, General Smith's comments about Marines needing to spend time in the Indo-Pacific region may not be a change to core policy, but it can affect promotion board members' personal preferences when they look at a slate of candidates. That's always tough. Yeah. When you go to the board. Yeah. Because you don't know what that board wants, right? Yeah. So... Marines, be careful. I think you should. Uh, I think all military should go as many places. I wanted to go, and they wouldn't send me. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 want to I am of the mindset the that if you have broadened horizons, if you have a chance to broaden your horizon, go for it. You know, I think it's great. I think it's great. If you have for... a chance to do joint assignment, that would that's sure. awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. eye opening. If you get a chance to go to any senior enlisted or made you know NCO school. That's not in your branch. Go do it, you know. I mean, like Ranger School. Ranger School. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Cap. For all uh, your Ranger panty needs, please contact <laughs> Eric's OnlyFans. He's got a special Mr. Euro- History. He's got a special couple postings uh, that have a European flair to them. This yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, silkies and a baguette. They are big into the Speedos and Birkenstocks out there. So you might, you know, I think his membership is uh, 25% off. So, Oh, boy. Remember, search for hog on Earl only. <laughs> All right, Jake, here we go. From Air Force Times, nearly 70% of active service members are overweight. What? Yes. According to a report by the American Security Project, Released last Thursday, more than two thirds of active duty service members are within their, within the overweight or obese ranges of the body mass index. Body mass is this, index. Is this Air Force or all? All services. All military. But that's what tells you how jacked up I think the BMI measurement is. Wow. Right. Defense Department data shows that the obesity rate calculated using a person's age, height, and weight has more than doubled over the past decade. Well, okay. So if they're still using the same jacked up formula 10 years, you know, back then, they're still using it. But if weights have doubled in 10 years. They're doubled then. Okay. It's a bad method, but if that method is still being used and it's doubled. Man, it's that's crazy. From, it's gone from 10% to roughly 21% at the same time. Over the BMI? Or, yes. Or 21%. Uh, wow. Defense Department data shows that the obesity rate calculated using a person's age, height, and weight has more than doubled over the past decade from 10% to roughly 21% are obese now. Right? Yeah. At the same time, more than half of young Americans now qualify as obese, and it's the number one disqualifier for recruiting prospects. 
We're fat. We're fat nation, baby. Yeah, fat nation, man. That's crazy. Uh, now, I mean, I have, I, I once have an again, issue with though, that, that's right. The because, recruiting is going down. Uh, well, yeah, right, right, and 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 they're getting fatter, and they're like, hey, we can't sign these guys up because they're too fat. Well, it's like maybe it's just I, I have a hard time with that BMI piece. I have a hard time with yeah. the with the head and neck or what was it neck and waist well right yeah you you and i were of that age where we'd see a a guy that was built like a tater tot right yeah built like a tater tot and he's got no yeah no neck or like freaking lats up (laughs) to here right and you're like oh he can be 280 we're good yeah because his his neck's so big it's that was the secret right yeah if you're measuring your waist and your neck, if your neck was big, you were you were golden. If your neck yeah. was normal, and your and your waist was normal, or not obese necessarily, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're measuring thirty four waist as a guy in his twenties, but you're not tall enough, forget it. Now you're now yeah. you're in the tape test, right? Now you got to get taped every goddamn day. But I mean. That Are we that much bigger than everybody? Dang, dude. No, I wasn't tall enough. I well, wasn't... yeah, I know you, but I'm I'm saying Americans as a whole. Oh, now this generation, we're yeah. that much bigger than. Yeah, they're fat. Man, that's crazy. That's. But sad. I, I mean, if you if you use that tape test that we were subjected to, that always yeah. that always put me because I wasn't tall enough. I had a big enough neck, but I wasn't tall enough. So being five eight, I had to be one sixty five, one seventy at my age group, something like that. And I was never that; I was always over that. So I would always have to go get taped, right? Football. Well, oh, I was definitely part of one of those statistics before yeah, I retired. All, all those guys, football players. Yeah. Um, and but the, but if you look at that chart, even being six foot, you still had to be. Under 190, under 180. Yeah, yeah, you're 185 <laughs> kind of thing. Or else you're on automatically, just according to that chart. I was like, but I mean, why our why fitness have we not test, updated that yet? That's why I don't understand. I wonder if the science still stands, and we're just getting. Fired. I don't know. Uh, most of the guys that I saw getting taped could pass the fit test fine, or the PT yeah. test, right? Uh, there were very few that were like. Dude, I don't know how how many more tests you can go. Because you need to get out. I I can visibly see your belly, right? Those guys, but there wasn't that many of them, right? And that never came up unless they failed their fit test or their PT test. But the guys who were bigger, who could pass their PT test, always had to go. And you're like, oh, you're obese. I'm like, well, I'm passing my fit test, and yeah. according to this chart, I'm obese. They don't fit together. You know, that thing doesn't fit together. And it actually says a BMI, which is based on a 200-year-old calculation that sought to define the body composition of the, quote, normal man, has faced controversy in recent years. The American Medical Association in June updated its policy on BMI, acknowledging historical, well, okay, historical harm and racist exclusion associated with the index because BMI is based primarily on data collected from previous generations of non-Hispanic white populations. All right. I, if you're going 200 years ago, you're valid. That's valid, right? I get yeah. That. Yeah. Um, Dude, we've all seen pictures of those World War II guys, and they're all freaking... They're all malnourished, right? They're all... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> those guys are. Or eating. they're ripped, right? Or yeah, right, right. You're like, geez, man, look at all these guys. Uh, what is this? Some elite school? And, uh... <laughs> no, they just couldn't eat, right? Yeah. And then you move into the '70s where everybody was skinny, but that was all coke, <laughs> right? That's the secret. And then they started adding shit to food in the '80s, and our weight started climbing up, and now it's, yeah. now it's ridiculous. And we stopped doing coke. Stop doing coke. <laughs> stop doing ephedra. You're banning all that shit. <laughs> now we're just getting fat. 
<laughs> uh, the, <laughs> a federal was awesome, man. I couldn't sleep on it. But was I lost that, so is that the weight. metrics? Like the, it was in a lot of shit. It was in metrics. Yeah. It was in uh, yeah. Oh man, some of the biggest sellers. I, I whoever yeah, uh, I remember. I, whoever I worked at Vitamin there. Hut, let us know what a federal a federal was in. So. Yeah, what is that? GNC. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember that metrics or whatever it was. There was a couple man, of them I, that had. It. I was like, don't take it after don't, six p.m. And they're like, yeah, ah, bullshit. Don't take it. I was like, oh. I'm there at one o'clock in the morning going, I can't yeah. get to sleep. Don't take it after nine thirty. But look like, at my weight loss. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. Internal was, core uh... temperatures like a <laughs> hundred. And it the used to just like <laughs> it used to build itself and it raises the heat. It raises the heat. Yeah. It was like, yeah. oh shit, it raises well, the heat. Yeah, it raises the heat because you're freaking doing a <laughs> Like a full marathon, my according to your beats per minute is resting at one twenty yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm burning calories just breathing. All I'm doing, all I'm doing is burning calories. But damn, I look good. Yeah, yeah. Yep. a little bit of headache. It's okay. Right. <laughs> Don't sleep for a day or two. <laughs> Small price to pay. So we're all fat, apparently, and all we're right. getting fatter and fatter. Right. Nice. Uh, okay, let's go to this one from the Air Force Times. This is a couple weeks old. Uh, I wasn't going to do it until I actually altered this. So, uh, well, before I share it, let me let me set this up. Yeah. Uh, this dating app, who was on uh, our Army Reddit, right? <laughs> he reached out on Reddit. And said, uh, hey, I, I've met this girl, and I think she's in the military, and I think she sent me some bogus deployment orders. What do you think? And he put that on a Reddit. He's a civilian, yeah. right? So he was using this dating app. He was corresponding with a woman who said she was in the military. He got suspicious when she sent him some deployment orders. So here is what he posted on Reddit. Hi, y'all. I'm a civilian and recently started talking to a girl from a dating app who said she's a staff sergeant in the Army and currently deployed at a base in Luhansk, Ukraine. I really want her to be real, but there have been a few things that don't seem quite right. <laughs> I, yeah, it's, Please it's, let her be real. I know. I know. So, all right. <laughs> can you see that? Was that yep, big enough? Yep. Is that fill on the screen? Right. So I've highlighted in boxes. All right. You can see the yellow boxes. So I've highlighted those things. I've lost my mouse. Oh, uh, um, where the hell is my mouse? Oh, okay. So I've highlighted a couple things that he's bringing up. I He said, I thought it was weird to have a U.S. AFRICOM base in Ukraine. So that first one, this deployment will take effect <laughs> yes. at the U.S. AFRICOM base in Camp Luhansk, Ukraine. But the guy said, I obviously don't know as much as the rest of y'all being a civilian. And this was on the R Army Reddit page. The letter also yeah. indicates that the alleged staff sergeant is one of 130 undercover soldiers with the 87th Combat Sustainment Support Battalion. That's a pretty detail. That's a big detail to put in a deployment order that you're going to be part of 130 other the exact number undercover soldiers. Yeah. But I mean, right. We always try to mask how many people, what are we doing? When are now, we moving? Not that. Nah. 130. <laughs> 130. Exactly. And they're all undercover. undercover. So I'm not giving you all the information. Well, it says about, sorry. <laughs> That's true. About that's to throw the enemy off. Oh, maybe she was 131. About 130 oh, other. That's a good point. Oh, okay. That's a yeah. good point. What's even more audacious I, is that the text of the letter switches between Times New Roman, yeah. which is supposed Thank to be you. standard, right? And a sans serif looks like Calibri. So you can see how it's, it's shifts, well, right? Just in the first, not even getting to the deployment letter, right there, my... 80 freaking my anal retentiveness is going crazy like the dates in a different font and size right. 
reference <laughs> numbers in a different font. Like the reference number looks kind of legit because that's times and sure. all that. Yeah, that's. Uh, and yeah, then yeah, you've yeah. got multiple colors of things. Up, I mean. <laughs> But go down to that third paragraph. Right? Oh, January seventh, twenty twenty four, must be taken continuously. What the fuck does that mean? I have no idea. That means nothing, right? Uh so finally, the letter is signed. Best regards. That's that on the left. It's like best regards to you, no, undercover soldiers. <laughs> yeah. Uh. And January, then, 20, January 7th, 2020 must be taken continuously, period. In the case of dual military couples, that, that makes terminal leave, which is leave before you're, get you're getting out, out. Yeah. Yeah. May be granted to create any kind of shared benefits. First of all, the military is not going to do anything special for you to give you more benefits. Right. That almost seems like they cut and pasted something In all out cases. of like a terminal hey you know this is your terminal uh order your service yeah. ends here that and that's it's almost what like it... they took that out and stuck it in there yeah because this one about january 7th 2024 must be taken continuously must be something about leave okay final leave in the yeah. case of dual military couples terminal leave may be granted to create so it must be something taken from something else obviously yeah i don't know I love how unused terminal leave will be for yeah i mean that, okay yeah it's all got to be from some other it just doesn't fit no the deployment letter at the, at i guess the it might i mean i'm not army i don't know I, and it I looks don't know, suspect uh, to me I, it even the header with yeah. the with the different fonts of the united united states department of the army 32nd infantry division color different fonts bolded yeah army wouldn't waste their money on that right <laughs> I thought it was funny the last one here down on the oh. final right Marine Lieutenant Colonel Joseph J. McCarthy who was a Medal of Honor recipient yes. who served during World War II and died in 1996 also signed the letter apparently posthumously yeah <laughs> and he's a notable commander he's a notable which makes no sense either I don't uh, understand those signatures either what's that oh no, I know Either way, Michael has best regards, defense secretary, best regards, uh, not lined up. I mean, look, they're they're not even lined up, right? I yeah. mean, if you go, I think she's real. I say go for it, buddy. Hey, go even if you knew it was bullshit, I mean, I she went through a lot of effort. On what she looks like, right? <laughs> it, I mean, I assume she's going for her. it. According to her picture, at least, but. I would go. I would. I, I would roll the dice. I would. I would do it. I mean, you could do way worse in the army. Oh sure, sure. But you've come this far. If she's willing to do that to impress you, okay, I'm with that. Maybe this is the, her way of getting out of the relationship, though. But she's man, like, I can't deal be. with this shit. I got orders. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, that she's already deployed. To her AFRICOM base in Ukraine, right? Oh, well. But here's the thing is if he, even if he has seen her, depending on what the dating app is, right? Ukraine. How much is that just like some thug guy imitating a woman? And he sends her this deployment letter to prove that it's her, sends fake pictures of her with like army nice. card. Right. Yeah. And then hits him like up with, "Hey, I'm supposed to deploy back to the states next week. I can't wait to have dinner with you, but I don't have enough money to send my stuff back. Could you help me out? Sure. How much you need? Yeah. Uh, Five hundred bucks would be great. And I, I mean, worst case scenario, stuff. you end up declaring bankruptcy <laughs> and divorced. Eh. Haven't when who line. hasn't been there? Who <laughs> hasn't been line. there? Come on, yeah. And plus, you got a much better story than hey, you got divorced because your wife slept with somebody. You're like, yeah. Hey, I paid some Eastern Ukrainian who I thought was a woman all my money, yeah, and I got nothing back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, way better than just 
Well, I don't know. It might be better yeah. than a surprise tie. It might hurt right? at, the, at it might hurt initially, but you know how we we kind of it's almost like injuries, right? It's almost like physical injuries, you know, like yeah. Teapot's hip dysplasia. Oh, yeah. I I see your hip dysplasia and I've got a total knee replacement, right? Yeah. Uh, but divorces are kind of like that. Right? Oh, you your girl sent you a letter while you were deployed said you wanted to get divorced let me tell you my why what my wife let me tell you about this one right yep so oh, they're yeah. kind of they're kind of playing cards there right you know, oh, i like you it got a, i like you it. got a full house hand let me tell you my four of a kind divorce let me tell you about this <laughs> i was looking I was... in the window on a food run <laughs> sorry that's an inside joke but for those who know it that's damn funny, right? And, but I don't think she did anything. She no, just got she into bed did. with her panties on. I, 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 with that other dude. But she was dressed. But they both had their underwear on. Yeah, so they didn't do anything. Did you go in and talk to him? No. I just, I, I had to get back. I had, shift. I had to get back. I had the food run. <laughs> damn, I feel so bad for the guy. This, this is the one time. You could have burnt the house down and been late with the food. And totally justified. And everybody yeah. would have been like, Everybody would have been like, good call. I would have done the same thing. <laughs> you have a couch I could stay on? <laughs> My bed's currently occupied. I know this is not funny to anybody, but imagine. It's funny. Jake, that's yeah. it, man. Where, where's shift change, baby? Where's shift change? Yeah. Right? We can't yeah. go on. Uh, I'll give you I'll give you the podcast medal of honor just because I mean not medal of honor podcast good the cup. just because yeah. you came on I can't yeah, even see if I can you. see that just because I showed up just because you showed up <laughs> sometimes sometimes thank you, thank you all it takes is just showing up and you're a hero right yeah is that two weeks in a row that I got that or who who got it no last week? Eric got it. No, that's a freaking... Oh, Eric got it last week because he won the astronaut quiz. Oh, yeah, good call. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure he cheated. He had it open on another tab. <laughs> <laughs> he was really confident about it. Oh, he's good, man. Yeah. He's, he's, he's actually yeah. pretty good. I love the fact that Teapot and I had, like, minimum... Well, he did 20 years. I did 16 years Yeah, he in was space. a space baby, right, right. Yeah. And we we're getting whooped by a freaking <laughs> yeah, a security X-top. forces dude. Yeah, I love it. Hey, Eric's smarter than us all. We're yeah, good. Eric T. I won't give it to you. You better be here next fucking week. So, <laughs> on behalf of Jake and I, I'd like to thank you for listening today. Oh shit! Wait, 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 wait. Oh I wait, I forgot. I got to do this again. Ah, all right. Well, this isn't. Uh... All right, let's hope it works this time. Um, this is going to be hard to time. So what's what's a um, what's a he's in Amsterdam, right? Well, he's going down that Viking River cruise. Yeah, yeah, so he's yeah, going yeah. through many countries, right? Yeah. <laughs> I see the wheels turning, man. <laughs> oh, I should have, I should have brought that up. Okay, still learning. On behalf of Jake and I, I'd like to thank you for listening today. Please like, share, subscribe, and let us know how we did in the comments. And make sure next week that you are not, not late for changeover. <laughs> Just do a Borat not. Not, not late for changeover. <laughs> late for changeover. Not. <laughs> All right. Jake, thanks for the week, man. And I'll see you next week. And hopefully, uh, well, uh, Eric won't be back from Europe. No, I hope he is. He's in Amsterdam doing a Viking River cruise or some crap like that. I hope he is half high up on mushrooms, just going through pillaging for apple tarts. <laughs> Whatever port he lands in, just getting blasted and ravaging the local bakery. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.
Thanks for listening. Go. We'll talk to you next week. Now, here's, here's the problem with this. I don't know how to fade out the video. Oh, I love it. It's perfect. <laughs> Just fumbling around the whole time. Uh, Yeah, this sucks. You just have to fade out the sound, huh? Well, I don't know how to fade out the video. I'm... Oh, well. Don't look Goodbye. at me. Goodbye. I barely even read the articles. <laughs> <laughs>